Hello, today we are going to talk about word stress in compound words. But first let's start by defining what a compound word is. A compound word is made out of two separate elements or words and the meaning of it uh, differs from the meaning of the original components. So here we have an example. We have paper and we have the picture of a boy and the resulting compound is paper boy which of course is not a boy made out of paper but a boy who delivers papers. From the point of view of how compound words may appear we can write them or we can find them in three different ways. Uh, they can be written as two separate words with a space in between which are called open compounds here we have an example credit card also high school we may have compounds that are written as one word which are called closed compounds or solid or also established compounds depending on the author as the examples here airplane highland lighthouse or we also find compounds which are written with a hyphen in between which are called hyphenated compounds as the examples that I can show you bad tempered good looking high minded another thing that we have to take into consideration is the grammatical category of the compound which is completely different from the components of that compound. So when we have a compound word that functions as a noun, we are going to stress it or apply primary stress on the first element of the compound, regardless the grammatical category of the component parts. The only thing that matters is the resulting grammatical cap category of that compound. So here we have football, which is noun plus noun, armchair, noun plus noun. But then we have, for example, writing desk, which is gerund plus noun, or swimming pool, again, gerund plus noun, or high school, which is adjective plus noun, highway, adjective plus noun, or we can have cry baby, verb plus noun, push cart, verb plus noun. So, important thing is the grammatical category of the resulting compound. If it is a noun, then we are going to stress the first element. When we talk about stressing compound uh, words functioning as a noun, we have to take into consideration if we are talking about an established compound or a closed compound, meaning a word that is written altogether as one word or it can be separated by a space, but the meaning of that compound is different from the, the, the elements, the component elements, or if we are talking about um, a compound word in which one is the attribute or the characteristic of the other. In the first case, when there is a tight connection between the two words and we have a third meaning, we are going to stress, as we have said, the first element. Now, when we are talking about an attribute to the second element, then we are going to stress the second element because it is generally a noun. So here we have some examples. We have, for example, greenhouse, which is a place where we grow plants, but a greenhouse, which is a house painted in green, or a dark room, a place where we develop pictures, or a dark room, a place with no light. A blackboard, um, a board that we use to write when we are teaching, or a black board, any kind of board that is painted in black. And my favorite, English teacher, 
a person who teaches the language, English, or an English teacher, which is a teacher who was born in England, not necessarily teaching the language. Yes. All right, and here we have some more examples, but this is very important to distinguish that. If it is an established compound with a separate meaning from its components, primary stress on the first element, or if it is an attribute to the second element, in which case we are going to apply primary stress on the second element, which is the noun. Then, another important aspect to consider is the place that compound has in a sentence, because that also affects the way in which that compound is going to be accented. So here we have, for example, in the case of well-being or well-being. And I'm going to illustrate this with the examples that we have here. It is essential for health and well-being to maintain, to maintain a positive attitude to life. So here, before the infinitive uh, verb, we are going to stress the second element. Now, second example, the techniques are designed for your well-being. So this compound is the last word of a sentence. And therefore, we are going to stress the second element. Now, look at the third example. They form part of a new trend of well-being psychology. In this case, that compound is modifying another noun. And the noun always has the priority, yes, for primary accentuation. So, in this case, we shift the stress to the first element. Then we have seen examples of compound nouns that are uh, either written all together as um, closed compounds or open compounds when they are separated by a space. But we have some cases of hyphenated compound nouns. Here we have ceasefire, court martial, cross purposes, or formed by three elements, father-in-law, mother-in-law. And then we have some which are which carry primary and secondary stress. Remember that in other videos we have said that primary stress is the most prominent, most important and perceived uh, stronger and louder, yes, uh, in a word. And then we have some unaccented um, syllabus, which are not uh, easily perceived. And we have secondary stress, which are syllabus that are also relevant, but not as relevant as the one that stands out because of these characteristics I have mentioned. So the most important accentuation is the primary stress, which goes on top and before the syllaba. And then we have another stress that is also relevant, which is the secondary one that appears uh, in notation as below and before the stress, uh, in this case the stress word, because here we are talking about words in compounds. When we are talking about simple words, we talk about syllabus. Here we have more examples of compound nouns written as two words. Here we have football player or we have carving knife or we have a pork chop. We are reading them at random. What I want you to pay attention to is the last is to the last line of these examples because I have said that in a compound noun the primary stress goes on the first element and that is true, but I also have to bear in mind the uh, most important syllaba of that first element. So here we have economy class. So we have primary stress on the first element, but on the prominent syllaba, which is not necessarily the first syllaba of a word. So careful with that, yes. On the first element or word, yes, but on the most prominent syllable. And here we have more examples. Departure time. 
uh, or administrative tools. So careful with that, where to place the stress, yes? Then we have phrasal verbs with postpositions, which are adverbial particles. When we have a phrasal verb functioning precisely as a verb as such, we are going to place the primary stress on the particle. Why? Well, because it gives the meaning to the phrasal. So we have, for example, come back, which is not exactly the same as come in. So, functioning as verbs, we are going to stress the particle because it gives meaning to that verb. And here you have many more examples. Now, it may happen that this uh, combination of verb and particle functioned, um, functions as a noun, in which case I am going to stress the verb and not the particle. But the meaning, the grammatical category, is going to be, again, a noun. So here we have, for example, uh, a comeback, a getaway, an outlook. See the difference between the grammatical categories of these combinations. If I say, for example, sorry, I couldn't come to the party, uh, I promise I'll make up for you, I'll make up for you, meaning I will compensate that. Now, if I say, look, I have just bought some new makeup, makeup, so that is talking about a cosmetic, right? So remember that when functioning as verbs, we are going to stress the particle. When functioning as nouns, we are going to stress the verb. Then we are going to move on to compound adjectives. In here we have primary and secondary stress and of course in a compound adjective we are going to have that the primary stress falls on the second element. So here we have dark green or light blue, right? Uh, Old-fashioned, uh, well-known, right? Um, easy going or duty free right so the second element of compound adjectives uh, of course functioning as adjectives it's going to be uh, placed on the second element now i have marked here two examples which are really interesting heartbroken heartbroken would be an alternative pronunciation for American English and heartbroken stress it on the first element is going to be the way uh, British English stresses this uh, compound the same here with snow white given a characteristic of the color and snow white which is the name of uh, a fictional character on a fairy tale all these compounds that I have shown in this uh, slide here that have primary stress on the second element may suffer a, a, a stress shift when they are at the same time modifying a noun, meaning that if I say, for example, mm, dark green Yes, we are going to place primary stress on the second element. But if I say a dark green eyes, because that compound is modifying a noun, the primary stress always goes on the noun and the secondary stress is going to be shift to the first element. All right, that is what we call stress shift. Modifying a noun, the stress pattern varies. Then we have, when we have uh, compound adjectives um, that have one of, the, of its elements, a noun, right, in which one of the elements is a noun, the stress, the primary stress goes on the noun. So, for example, here we have waterproof, but we have low-key. 
we have high class, but we can say law abiding. So we can, may have a two word adjective in which one of the components is a noun, then the primary stress goes on the noun. Again, talking about uh, what happens with these compound adjectives, we have different ways of writing them. So, for example, if it is modifying a noun, as we said a moment ago, then the compound adjective is going to be written with a hyphen. So here we have a dark blue dress or a well-known writer. But if uh, that compound um, adjective goes at the end of the sentence after the verb, then we write it without the hyphen. It's crazy, isn't it? But this is what happens. So here we have a dark blue dress, but her dress is dark blue. And of course, the stress pattern of the compound adjective varies, changes. Then we have some certain uh, adjectives which keep the hyphen anyways. So here we have, he is absent-minded and old-fashioned, or she is good-looking and good-natured, right? So some, some cases of compound adjectives keep the hyphen. Mm -hmm. And then when we have combinations of um, adverbs ending in li and adjective or, or participles, then of course we do not write the hyphen. So we say a widely known fact or entirely white hair or a highly paid lawyer. So we do not write hyphen there. In the case of uh, compound nouns that are hyphenated, yes, um, here, they keep the hyphen when, if they are an attribute to another noun. So here we have high school, which we write them with a hyphen, and a high school teacher. We shift the stress and primary stress on the noun being modified, and secondary uh, stress would be on the first element of the adjective, but we keep we keep uh, the hyphen, okay? When this compound acts as a noun, grammatical category of the compound is a noun, but as an attribute, yes, or modifying another adjective, uh, sorry, another noun. And then we have more cases of uh, double accented compounds expressing here, comparison, ice cold, yes, bottle green, um, degree, extent or intensive, day long, yes, knee deep, or for example when we have double barrel titles like Archbishop or name and surname Jack Roberts, mm, uh, Queen Mother, or when we have acronym, um, acronyms uh, like CIA, UNO, yes, the primary stress is generally on the second element, but we have exceptions like UFO or AIDS or NASA. When we have link fragments, yes, bed and breakfast, on and off, right? So here again, secondary stress on the primary element, on the first element, and primary stress on the second element. Then short greetings, good morning, for goodness sake, right? If it's not modifying another word, as I always say. Names of special days like Christmas Day, summer holidays, New Year. But there are exceptions here. We have Halloween, weekend, springtime, which may vary if it is American pronunciation to Halloween, weekend, springtime. Then if these double accented compounds are attributes uh, referring to gender, male nurse, women drivers, 
uh, or for example, if we are talking about organizations or, or, or socially defined uh, relations like family doctor or fellow citizen or merchant navy, right? Always primary stress on the second, secondary on the first. It's like we're shifting. Well, unique places or, 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 or people or days like world or uh, moments yes world war or portland cement or uh, tomorrow morning or um, Nobel prize when we are talking about the material or ingredient of an element like rice pudding or a leather belt but here again we have exceptions combinations with juice, cake, bread, milk, paper, and corn, these words do not carry primary stress. So, for example, we say orange juice, or we have say food cake. Hmm? Uh, and then, for example, when we are talking about places, hmm? uh, shop window, ground floor, hmm? country house, again, we have exceptions, like farmhouse or sports cards or window seat. More examples of these special cases. Implying relation between two elements. Part-time, first class, mother tongue, yes. Uh, back seat, middle ages. But when we have a combination in which uh, the first element back is part of the body or a symptom, we are going to stress that word. So we have a backache or we can talk about a backbone, yes. Then again, uh, for example, we have combinations um, like, for example, um, adjectives um, plus adjectives or participles like red hot or light green, yes. Um, Adjectives and past participles, blue-eyed, clean-shaven, old-fashioned. We have already seen these cases, um, um, for example, uh, and some, some exceptions that you have there of ing participle and noun, in which we are going to stress the noun, sleeping dogs, flying saucer, living memory, yes. And, uh, of course, we have um, here to pay attention to uh, combinations with the following words church, hall, abbey, avenue, bay, forest, lane, circus, garden, court, palace, park, road, station, tower, valley, delta. All of these words carry primary stress. So we say fifth avenue or town hall or abbey road, except for combinations with the word streets. We say Oxford Street, Albion Street. This is something to pay careful attention to and practice. And then we have numerals, which when we are teaching, it's quite a thing, especially with kids. So uh, in numerals, the second element carries the primary stress. So here we have 13, 17, or, for example, 23, 46. And it doesn't matter if we are talking about cardinal or ordinal numbers. The, the primary stress always falls on the second element. So we have, for example, um, 75th, 62nd, yes. Or when we are talking about fractions, one half, two thirds, right? Or if we are reading a longer uh, number that uh, it is um, formed by compound yes, figures, we always stress the second element of each of the parts. So we say 532, okay? Always the second part. So to summarize, we have that compound nouns, which grammatical category is a noun, we stress them on the first element. We said that in the case of compound adjectives, we are going to stress the second element, unless one of the, of the two components is a noun. 
Uh, then when we have compound adjectives uh, that um, stress another noun, the, the stress pattern shifts. Yes, when we, with that compound adjective modifies a noun, we have to change the original uh, stress pattern. Yes, so we are going to use, uh, we are going to place the primary stress on the noun and the secondary stress will move to the first element of the compound adjective. Um, when we are talking about phrasal verbs, if they function as verbs, we are going to stress the particle. If uh, the combination of verb and particle um, have um, ha has a noun as grammatical category, we are going to stress the verb, yes. Then, in the case of reflexive pronouns, we are going to stress the second part, myself, herself, ourselves. And compounds which ing particle and noun, yes, functioning as a noun, we are going to stress the first element, like shooting start or leading road. And if we have compounds that um, are made of um, noun plus noun, yes, uh, here, as you have, and the second element is uh, carries an ER on an OR particle, we stress the first element, the first component. I hope it's clear. Well, now we have reached to practice time. So here you have a dialogue uh, in which I have highlighted uh, primary stress on many of the compound words that appear here for you to have a guide, an idea. My suggestion is that you stop the video here and you practice reading this dialogue aloud, taking into consideration all the things we have discussed already. And then, yes, you play the video again and you can listen, yes, to the, uh, the same dialogue read for you to have a reference of how these words are pronounced. Are you coming to the swimming pool? We'll grill some hot dogs and Mary will bring some crisps for chips. Sorry, I can't. I'll be working in the dark room. I have to develop some photographs for a secondary school project. But that's so old fashioned. Nowadays, kids share self pictures on social networks. Selfies? No, this is for a photographic course I've signed up for. I didn't know you were an artist in your free time. Apparently, that's a talent I take off to my great-grandfather. I was told he was a well-known photographer in his time. Really? And it's story time. Tell me all about it. He was a photographer during World War II, and it was his getaway from hard labor in prison when he was captured. No kidding. Yes, he had to take pictures of the headquarters, the crew members, and document their daily activities. When the war ended, he came back to London and worked for a local paper on Albany Road. My great-grandmother used to work at a coffee house on Bagshot Street. Maybe they've met. It's possible if she worked there after the war. I'll find out. Now, remember, as I always say in all of the videos, that this is a guide to help you understand how to stress words in English, but that neighboring words may affect the stress pattern of a word. So we have to bear in mind which is the variety of English we are using it and the context in which we are using this compound word. My recommendation, as always, is check with the dictionary before a presentation or a class. Try to imitate models of difficult uh, stress patterns uh, from movies, from series. Say these things aloud. Uh, read uh, articles and, and instructions because they are plenty of compound words. So you can get familiarized with the pronunciation of them and try to use these compound words that you are learning in sentences of your own personal life. So you can little by little incorporate them. And 
it's then it's easier to to internalize and repeat a correct stress pattern of it and as i always um include in the videos the references for further reading yes of where i have taken um, these guides that i am sharing with you so we'll see each other in some other video okay bye